So we have a, a wonderful testimony tonight. Uh, our, my new friend, Bob. I met him before, but they said that he has a powerful testimony. So I'm going to bring up Bob right before Brother Mike comes up. He wants to share his testimony. Come on up, Bob Willis. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, thank you. Okay, I don't know how much time I had. They said not much, so. Well, something like that. God's done so much for me. Um, you're here because you're looking for more. And I always knew there was more because the Bible said it. But it wasn't really real. And all the issues I was having, especially my massive lust problem, I can't even go into it because I'm so ashamed of it. But God took it. I remember when it happened. I was in the gym working out and a very attractive woman walked by and nothing happened. And I, I remember um, I went out to my car and just started crying. Um, testimony is kind of hard because I've been under some attack here since I moved here from California. And I never thought I would live here in Arizona. <laughs> the things that have happened, you know, in the last year. And uh, I always want to emphasize is, you know, it's the Lord doing the work because uh, I'm one of the people who defend Mike a lot on YouTube because I see the attacks and, you know, he's a cult leader and all these other silly things. I know the fruit that's in my life. And I see the people that are coming from all over the place. Amen. I'm here. <laughs> I haven't missed once since I've come here. And I'm not looking for brownie points because I want to be here. And uh, I could watch it on YouTube like anybody else, and you, you get everything. But uh, I always knew that the Lord was real. My mom was a Christian but had a lot of problems. I was called to spiritual warfare about a year and a half ago. I remember when the Lord started speaking to me about that, and I was like, oh, no, I don't want that. No. Because <laughs> I understood a little bit what that meant. I'm like, all right, you're going to have to show me what that means. You know, I'd read in the Bible, you know, about demons and different things, but I didn't understand how it really worked and how insidious it really is towards us. And then I, when I started to see the teaching, I remember the first teaching I saw that Mike put was the secrets of the spiritual world. Maybe I have that title not exactly right, but I watched it. And I remember I was about a half hour into it. I just got pissed. It was like, I knew it. I knew it. All these things that were happening all the inconvenient mishaps and the attacks and things like that, you know, where I'd go weeks not wanting to pray and all these other things, people attacking my business and everything. I had a thriving auto detailing business and it closed in two months. The Lord said, I let Satan do it to you because your wife was praying that your business would close and I needed you to do something. So, you know, <laughs> I literally had 90 days of bookings for the last 10 years in my business. I never had days off. It was good and it was bad, but now I'm ready to fight. And, uh, you know, I, I did martial arts. I did actual fighting. You know, I did the jujitsu. I mean, I wasn't a champion or anything like that, but, you know, I got full contact fighting and the Lord steered me wide away from that too. I, you know, because I was a big UFC, I would never miss it. And he said, I, I don't want you watching that anymore. Music, I used to love music. So I, I don't want you listening to it anymore. I'm like, Lord, what about jazz? It's instrumental music. You know, what are, you know, he says, I remember him telling me, does the song have a title? I said, well, yes. It has a theme and it's not edifying me. So don't listen to it anymore. And from that day I said, okay. And I never had to desire. Some people find that extreme, but it's helped me tremendously. So when you think, Oh, I, you know, I really want to hold on to that. There's a reason Satan wants you to hold on to it. There's just nowhere you can go where music isn't played. So anyway, I'll stop that. This place is unbelievable. Um, I've watched all the people, all the staff. And they work tremendously hard. Getting this place ready, here all the time. You know, they're volunteers. I laugh when people, oh, you guys are making money off this and stuff. I'm like, really? <laughs> Where's that? <laughs> you know, and Mike jokes about, you know, the limo stuff and everything. And some people take that literally. I've seen the comments. Well, you know, anyway, 
all you're here. I'm here because I mean, the Lord's working. He's here. You know, I like him a lot, but I know it's 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 the Lord doing the works. Uh, I'm just tremendously blessed. I'm trying to hold it back. I'm ready to break down right now because I'm just you know it's incredible. So praise God. To him goes the glory. And uh, let's let's get to fighting. I'm I'm ready to go. I really am. So. Come on, give it up for the Lord. Hallelujah. We got one more testimony, and then we'll bring up Brother Mike, all right? Kelly's got a testimony. Not as good as Robert's, because it's in the human world. But last night, um, our Thursdays, this, is, this place is anything like any other that you've witnessed. This woman came in last night and asked if she could bring her dog in here. At the old place, we used to pray for dogs. Anybody that would bring anything in, we'd pray for. So I said, yeah, you're welcome to bring the dog in. Dog's name is Dash. Nice little wiener dog. And so after Francis had prayed... Um, she was in the corner, and so I went over to her, and, and she said, can you pray for my dog? And I said, yeah, I'd love to pray for your dog. I've prayed for three animals total. That was the fourth. And um, I asked her what happened with this dog, and they couldn't really tell what happened. They don't know whether the dog got injured, whether he jumped down off something, but something wasn't right with his spine. Spine, you could feel his vertebrae in the back. He, didn't, he hasn't been eating, appetite. One doctor said that he had cancer, but then they reneged on that, so the dog ended up not having cancer. But he couldn't move his neck, he couldn't, he wouldn't jump, he was just lifeless, just dull. And so as we just, you know, it's, it's weird when you pray, you know, you're, you're putting your hands on this little dog, this little spine, not like I do, but, you know, I'm gentle with the dog. And pretty soon, she, he started yawning, and then he burped. I could feel this thing move. I've never seen a dog burp, but I saw this thing, I felt this thing move out of his spine and out of the front of his chest, and then all of a sudden, like, this big wad of snot came out of his nose, and the dog doesn't do that. And so the owner sitting in front watching this whole thing, she said, oh my gosh, she says, what is going on with this dog? She said, look at this dog. And secretly she was praying, she said, I'll know when this dog is healed is when, when this dog licks Kelly, and the dog doesn't lick anybody. So about two minutes later, we're still praying, and the dog is still, he's yawning like crazy, his tongue's hanging out, and, and now he starts to shake, his whole body started to shake. So at that time, we were talking about the neck, and she said he can't put, move his neck down, so the dog goes like this, he moves his neck down, and then he moves it up like this, like, like he was listening to her. So I'm just, I'm holding him in my arms like this, you know, I love animals. So all of a sudden, he looks over the left, he looks over the right, his neck is moving like crazy, and he licks my nose. And then he starts licking my chin. So that, that dog, that dog left. He was lifeless, but he left with a lot of spirit last night. So that's cool. Anyway. <clears throat> that was an ostrich. We're praying for them down in this prayer room here. That noise, that was an ostrich. We're going to uh, open up another healing room, pets only, the second Saturday of every month going to have everybody bring their pets in here. You know, the Bible says that we know for sure spirits can get into humans and animals. We know that for sure. Whether they can get into anything else is a debatable subject. Okay, let's get going. <laughs> uh, there's our next seminar coming up pretty quick. And there's the radio programs. I'm on every day of the week now. I changed my uh, radio ministry. That's going to change starting uh, February. April 1st, that will not be any good. Not this Saturday, but next Saturday is our, our healing room. And the first, we've had it twice now, and both times, booming. Booming. One healing after the other. It's been absolutely fantastic. We may have to go to the, uh, more than once a month there. It's going so well. We're really happy with that. Robert and Kelly are killing that thing. All right. Uh, if you will switch over from Google to Good Search and... Put in our ministry name, Hardcore Christianity. They will donate to us while you surf the web. These are our four YouTube teaching channels. And tonight's broadcast is also on our YouTube site. Thursday night's uh, dog healing services are on live stream. <laughs> These lists are for humans, not dogs. One's for mentally ill Christians. The other one is for troubled Christian. If you send me an email, Mike at hardcorechristianity.com, be happy to send you one. Okay. 
YouTubers, thank you for tuning in every week. God love you. Your job, as you understand it, is to open up a terror cell in your church. You get it there with two or three other believers, then you start uh, picking off the sick people and seeing them healed and delivered. i done it before. It worked. Hey, if it works for me, it works for anybody. Thank you for your donations. Those are the donation boxes on the door. Thanks for uh, helping us. And we do need some more food for the Healing House. The people are flooding in next week. Uh, if you need a donation receipt, I'm getting several requests a week. Just send me an email, and I'd be happy to ship it right out to you, okay? You can donate to us on the website if you, shoot, if you choose to. And I'll see you in... Uh, Hey, uh, <clears throat> would you uh, shut that door, and then uh, would you mind getting me a bottle of water? Zendry, thank you. Uh, I'll be in Emporia, Kansas at the Church of God of Prophecy for a uh, healing service on March 15th. I'll be in Bentonville, Arkansas. I'm going to get a tour of the Walmart facility. That brought a... Uh, Incredible roar of approval. <laughs> oh, I should have gone to Target in Illinois. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, I'll be there for four days, end of March, beginning of April, right, for some healing and deliverance stuff. All right. Uh, I thought I'd do something fun tonight and uh, talk to you about something unbelievable. God's incredible love. All right. I get a lot of people coming in for counseling here, as you can imagine, hundreds over the years. And uh, most of them have problems with this subject. Almost every one of them have a problem with this, the most important subject in the Bible. I thought I'd just fix it tonight so we could get more people healed. The Bible says that God doesn't just love people. That's not good enough. He is love, and that's an important distinction. Okay? God is love, and that's all he is. That's all he knows, and that's all he can do. Beloved, 1 John uh, 4, uh, agapetos is an adjective describing Someone who is loved by God. Beloved, let us love one another, for love ek, comes out of God. Everyone that loves, agapao, shows their love to someone. Everyone who shows love, not just love. Okay? God, God loving people is not enough. You have to love them here, and you have to show someone love. Agapao is the Greek verb for agape, and that means you're doing something, demonstrating love. Everyone that demonstrates God's love is born of God and knows God. He that does not demonstrate the love, show the love, doesn't gnosko, does not understand God. If you don't give a rat's fanny about other people, you've got serious spiritual problems because you don't understand God because that's all he is there's nothing else it's 100% love God is love in this was manifest the love of God toward or in us because God sent his only begotten son into the cosmos human world so we might live through him. God loved us, and then he demonstrated that love, sending Christ. Loving someone is not going to do them any good. Loving somebody doesn't work unless you show it. Correct. I do a lot of marriage counseling in my counseling practice, and ooh, that's a big problem there. 
huge problem He told me he loves me Well, does he I don't think so why not he doesn't act like it I don't tell him at that point I tell him later she's right <laughs> God sent his only begotten son monogonase is a Greek word for one child is anybody here an only child you are sir okay no anyone nobody else oh bunch of breeders here um, <laughs> my mom and dad were only children both of them and my parents only had two children me a sister that means when I'm gone this trail of Smith's ends I am similar to the last of the Mohicans Did you ever see that movie <laughs> I dropped an old one on you there that's all right you'll catch up later God demonstrated his love toward us by sending the Son. Correct? And 1 John 4, we know and believed the love God has in us because God is love. That's all he is. He that may know remains in love remains in God. And God remains in him or her. Now, how does that work? That sounds silly. No. The Holy Ghost moved in here. Bingo. There's the love of God. See, you have the love of God. You're just not releasing it. Everyone who has the Holy Spirit already has all their gifts and all their fruit. But you have to learn to release it. It doesn't just come out how does it how do you release your gifts and your fruit well there's a little dial inside your inner man it's called your free will you have to use your free will by faith to release all these benefits you already have Hear the anointing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, if you remain in God, God remains in you. All you have to do is release it. Is that Jeopardy? <laughs> hey, as I as I told you before, I was a Secular counselor for years and uh, I had some friends of mine that were uh, psychologists psychotherapists and uh, a couple of them were forensic psychologists and uh, They would they would get contracts with the uh, State of Arizona Attorney General's office Maricopa County prosecutor's office and a forensic psychologist is a person that people hire to do profiles on criminals particularly ones I haven't caught yet they what they do is they look at the behavior patterns of the crime spree uh, they use them on all serial killers or serial rapists and they follow the pattern they look at the locations they analyze the type of kill it was and the type of rape it was that those kind of things I never had any interest in getting involved in that kind of work, but I like listening to their stories. They had really interesting stories about strange criminals. But what they do is they do a psychiatric profile on this criminal to try and predict, so the cops can predict, the detectives and so on, what may be this guy or gal's next move, so to speak. What, what if you did one of those things on God? What would it look like? What if we did a psychiatric profile on Yahweh 
the Hebrew God Well, we'd have to get him down here and do a clinical interview and we have to get his background We have to analyze how oh wait a minute somebody already did one on him. Excuse me. What am I thinking about? Somebody already did a psychiatric profile on Yahweh the eternal God it's in 1st Corinthians 13 Paul Unbeknownst to Paul didn't even know he was doing a psychiatric profile on God. I Just discovered it Thank you check this out. What is God's personality really like? What kind of a person is he inside? What is his makeup? Can you predict his next move? Can you predict his attitude? You sure can. Here's his profile, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Charity in the King James Bible was mistranslated. It's actually agape, love. Love does what? Macro through meal. Goes on and on. Human love doesn't. What do we call that? Uh, multiple divorces. Look what we got here. Inside God's profile of his personality, love keeps going on and on. Love is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not vault itself. What does that mean? Right, bragging, puffing up. Love is not puffed up. Fusiao, haughty. Jehovah is not haughty. Je Jehovah doesn't pump pump himself up. Number six, love does not behave a scale moneo. Inelegant, asininic, inappropriate, doofy. The love doesn't act like an idiot. What are you learning here? You can predict God's behavior by looking at his psychiatric profile. You can't, you can't lose. Love is not easily provoked. What does that mean? Rocks and milk. Yeah, he's got a truckload of patience. Right? Love does not think about evil things. Kekos is bad stuff. Lagizomai means to sit around thinking of negative things. Two, three, four, five, six. When do you when do you do that? When when do you, when does your skill level uh, accelerate there? Worry. There you go. Worrying means the Christian has no faith. When they worry, they logizomai. They make an inventory of potential negative results. Bad, 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 bad. Love doesn't do that. What's that mean? God is not nitpicking you. He doesn't sit around going, you know, you screwed that up, and this and that and this and this and that. You're a royal screw up. He doesn't do it. He leaves that for your family and friends. <laughs> Love, divine love, doesn't do that. It doesn't nitpick you. Jehovah doesn't sit around looking at you and go, man, you know, I just, what? It, it does not happen. I got to be helping somebody. Love rejoices in truth, not what they said about you. <clears throat> love gives you a fair shake. Love, stay go, covers up stuff that's embarrassing. Yeah, love doesn't run around gossiping on you. It doesn't run around trashing you. It doesn't run around ratting on you. See, it's not like a mafia. God doesn't do that. If somebody's saying something negative about you, it's got nothing to do with the Lord. Love 
believes all things. What does that mean? Pistuo, that's the verb for love. It means God shows his love. He doesn't just love you. He wants to show you he loves you. That's how he's built. He can't help it. You are the way you are. That's the way he is. He can't change. He can't change. Hope for all things. Love endures all things. Hupomeno means he hangs in when other people let you go. Love runs out here, never runs out there. Amen. And he's not nitpicking you like they did when they bagged you. Love doesn't beg. Love never ekpipto. Can't be driven out. What? Here's what we do. I've done it before too. You're praying about this and that and this and that. And nothing seems to be happening. And you're starting to get frustrated. <clears throat> then you, after, you st after you get frustrated, you start to think things that are negative. After you start thinking things that are negative, you start saying negative things. As you continue to go through that demonic system, you start to get frustrated with God. You little hacked off at him, kind of pissed. He never does that to you. A guy called me one time. He said, "Man, I can't do this. I've had enough of it. I'm, I, I don't want God anymore. I, I'm. I want out. I, I am." This guy was up to here. I said, "Well, that's your opinion." His opinion is, he's not leaving you. Well, you. That's got nothing to do with me. And it's got nothing to do with him. He's not leaving. Yes. And believe it or not, many Christians have given God a good cussing when they've been frustrated and hurt and worn out. And demonized and oppressed, they reamed him out and they cussed him out. You know what happened on his end? Not a cotton picking thing. <laughs> Not a thing happened. Why? You can't drive agape, divine love, away. Come on, brother Mike. You can't do it. Oh, Mike, that's that's outrageous. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Well, it sounds stupid, I'll admit it, but even if you go back into sin, even if you backslide, love never left you. I don't care what they told you at the Seventh Day Adventist Church or the Jehovah Witnesses. I don't care. No matter what you did and no matter what you said, love never left you. He never left. Divine love can't be driven out. Love is my zone bigger than hope and faith. For God so loved, Agapao showed his love, got his love to the world that he gave his only begotten son, Monogenes. So that whoever <coughs> believes in him, Pistuo, acts like they believe, steps out on their faith, should not perish, but have everlasting life. You know, there's no verse in the Bible that says God hates people in hell. Why? Because God is love. 
He doesn't just love. That's all he knows. What about judgment? Judgment and discipline and chastisement come out of love. Justice is an extension of true love. False justice, like in our American political system, that's all demonic. That's not, that has nothing to do with love. Number two, in light of that, what's God's favorite thing? Oh, it's got to be galaxies, heavenly abodes, and angels. Eh, wrong, Jack. Wrong. His favorite thing. Wrong. You're all wrong. His favorite thing. And the only thing he ever really wanted was you. Yep. As a Christian counselor, I commonly and routinely counsel people who are spiritual failures. And many Christians I've counseled are sinning more than sinners do. I see the stunned look on your faces. Some Christians sin all the time. They don't care anymore. Their consciences are getting seared. Guess what changed? Well, in the spirit world, on the demonic side, a lot of things change. That Christian is going to be beaten and tormented and crushed. On God's end, nothing changed. You cannot drive God's love out by sinning. I said it. <laughs> well, Brother Mike, in the Old Testament, the Amalekites, he melted them. Okay, we're not in the Old Testament. This is the cross of Calvary and the resurrection. This is the new covenant. You and I hit the lottery, so to speak. We are in the new covenant. Amen. There isn't anything you can do or say to get God to stop loving you. Why? You're his favorite thing. Genesis 1. Elohim, that's Hebrew, as you know, for God, it's plural, said, let us make man in our selim, resemblance, and after our own demuth, shape. Does God look like a dash out? No, no he looks like us. Two hands, two legs, head, torso, backside. And let him have dominion over all the earth. John 3. For God so what? Got his love to you. That's the verb for love. Love doesn't do you any good unless somebody gets it to you. That's what my wife told me. <laughs> you got to get your love to the person to make a difference. You can't just love them. It's not going to work. Love doesn't pay the bills. I thought that would go over better. <laughs> the world, cosmos is humanity. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him, pastuo, verb, steps out in faith for Christ. Not just mentally says, okay, I like Jesus. No, that's not, that's not going to work. Should not perish, a polemy go to be ruined or destroyed, but they will have ageless life. Age after age after age. Ionius, life, life. You live age after age after age, never dying. Chronically and eternally in what? God's love. That's what it says. God did not send his son into the cosmos human world to crino, judge the world, as mistranslated, but that the world through him might be sozo delivered. What is that? Agapa. It's God demonstrating his love for us. Why? That's all he knows. 
He doesn't know any different because that's what he is. No one can screw up enough to change that. It's not possible. And some of you are, you know, if you're not professional screw-ups, a couple of your po powerful amateurs at least, <laughs> you never lost God's love. It never left you. On your worst day, on your most sinful day, day. It never left you. Ephesians 2. God who is rich in mercy through his great love wherewith he loved us. Even when we were dead in sin he resurrected us or quickened us in Christ. Romans 5. God commands his love into us, ice into, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for you. Well, then how much more then, now that you've been justified by his blood, will you be saved from God's anger? I did a Bible study a couple years ago. It, was, it went over famously. God is not mad at you anymore. Yes. That was the title of it. I ought to do it again. God's not mad at you anymore. Jesus took the beating you should have taken. Why am I saying this? While you're going through deliverance and healing, it's a process for most people. And it goes like this sometimes. And when you go down and fail, the demons jump on you like a pack of wolves. They pile on and they try to lie to you and discourage you, and run you out. They can't do it. No amount of failures changes God. You don't have that kind of power to change God. You can't do it. Who do you think you are? You think you can make God stop loving you? What are you smoking? Are you nuts? It's not possible. I'm telling you it's not possible. You know what impossible means? It's impossible. While you were sinning like crazy, while you were a pedophile, while you were a whore, while you were murdering people, while you were coked out of your mind, God loved you unconditionally. Now that you've been justified by the blood, how much more will you avoid the anger of God? God is not mad at you anymore. What's the point of that? There's no reason to backslide anymore. There's no reason to get discouraged. There's no reason to give up. There's no reason to quit. God is not nitpicking you. He is not criticizing you. He's not angry at you. You cannot drive his love away. So while you're trying to disciple yourself, you are going to have ups and downs. Everyone has them. Everyone fails. Everyone screws up. Everyone sins. It doesn't change a thing. There's no reason to quit. There's no reason to give up. Oh, you screwed up again. Oh, okay. S reboot. There's nothing stopping you. You've been justified by the blood of Christ. What's that mean in legal terms? 
your sins have been expunged. They no longer exist. They're gone. In your spirit, man, you are a sinless, perfect person. There's no reason to quit anymore. There's no reason to give up. There's no reason to get angry and backslide. He's not angry at you anymore. YouTubers, there's no reason to backslide anymore. Did you know that? Yeah, you're not going to do it ever again, are you? Jeremiah even knew about it. This was before Jesus. Nobody sinned more than these Jews. Who sins more than Jews? <laughs> Nobody. Look at that. Jehovah's. Yes. Israel, I love you with an everlasting love. With loving kindness have I called you. They sinned like crazy. They were always backsliding and going into idolatry. <coughs> they didn't have the cross of Christ. They didn't have the blood of Jesus. How much more do you have than Jews? <coughs> Titus 3. The kindness and love of God our Savior toward men has appeared. Oh, no kidding. But this is a different Greek word for love here, isn't it? Where, what English word do we get from Philadelphia? Philanthropy, philanthropist. We also get the city of brotherly love. <laughs> Philadelphia. Yeah. They love, love to murder you there. <laughs> But anyway, that's what that word means, Philadelphia. It's supposed to be the city of brotherly love, but far from it. In fact, uh, Phil <laughs> Philadelphia just won the Super Bowl and, and tore down the downtown area. <laughs> they said the Chicago's not going to get up on us. We're going to we're going to burn our town down. Yeah, that's how demons work. But anyway. The, this Greek word means that you are fond of something. To be fond of it and supportive of it is what it means. It doesn't mean agape. Okay? So uh, Warren Buffett and Bill Gates, they are philanthropists now. Billionaire philanthropists. They like certain causes and they're fond of helping people. So they donate money and give it to needy whatever they're sponsoring. They're philanthropists, correct? Well, that's what it is. God's fondness. Here. Look, he doesn't just divinely love you, and he hasn't just shown his love for you. As unbelievable as this sounds, he likes you. <laughs> Your family can't even stand you. went beyond your family, went beyond your faults. He saw your needs. That's how they sing it. God likes people. You say, well, he doesn't know the people I know. Yes, he does. <laughs> yes, he does know them. Not by works of righteousness. We did. But we got God's love because he is merciful. That's the Greek word eliano. It means he has compassion on people. As King David said, he considers our frame and he knows we're just a bag of dust. And that's what he felt like when he wrote that psalm. But the point is, the point is, he likes you. And you've only got, as Grandpa used to say to me when I was little, listen, Mike, if you die and you can count your friends on more than one hand, you're going to be a lucky person. I had no idea what he was talking about. Until I became an adult. And then I was hoping for a couple. But anyway... <laughs> It doesn't matter what people think of you. 
God doesn't go by what others think of you. He doesn't care what they think. He likes you. Does he like your sin? No, of course not. Silly. He likes you as a person. There's a difference between you as a person and your sinful behavior. Correct? Everybody gets down. Everybody has bad days. Everybody sins. Correct? This isn't a deep revelation. You're not only loved, you're liked. Likes you. Wants to help you. That's all he knows. There's no reason to backslide anymore. There's no reason to get bummed out over failures and sinning. You just confess it and apologize. Boop. And go on. Reboot. It's as if it never happened. I don't care if you're a I don't, I don't care if like you're like the gates of hell center. Okay, let's let's take an example. Smoking. Years ago, when I was in my Assembly of God mode, I used to do altar prayer work. People would come down the altar, and I'd come down and pray with them. This is before I got delivered from demons. This is when I was in, when I was all churched out. I told you this story a couple years ago, but I came down there, some lady, this pastor called for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I go, oh, good. Let's go down there. I want to see some people get filled with the Spirit. Well, this lady come down and knelt there. I was on the left side, and she knelt over there. I said, well, she's not getting filled with the Spirit. She's, I, she smokes. I knew, the, knew her. I knew she smoked. If you smoke, hey, you're going to hell. <laughs> well, to my utter religious surprise, I like to drop my drawers and fainted. <laughs> She burst out in tongue. I knew she smoked. Well, I was so cooked out in religion back then. I was get, starting to get this legalistic crap going. After the service, I was a little hacked off at the good Lord because he had jacked up my theology. <laughs> she was willfully sinning by sucking on cigarettes. I found that appalling. Yeah, and a couple come in for counseling. Uh, they were living together. Oh boy, this is a horrible sin. Nope. No, they both got delivered. She got healed. Living together, weren't married. I know. Yeah, I knew that was going to land. Now, did I counsel them on that subject? Of course I did. Okay. Don't send me an email. Okay. Behold, you have been made whole. Go and sin no more. Amen. I told him about the guy. Okay. But the point I'm trying to make is love extends beyond your faults and your failures and your sins. Because when you were a stinking sinner, Christ died for you. How much more then? Now that you've been justified by the blood, will you avoid God's anger? If you avoided God's anger when you were a sinner, how much more now that you're saved will you escape? Is what Paul's saying. This has got to be registering. Maybe not. What over here? Is that registering? <laughs> If God did not was not angry at you when you were living in sin, how much more now that you're saved and washed in the blood would he not be angry at you? Duh. <laughs> it's all here, folks. You people are lucky to, to see this. Through the uh, through the washing, how did he do it? Check this out. I didn't get anything from God because I was a good person. In fact, I was quite the opposite when I came to Christ. I was a sinful person. 
Yes, yeah, sir. I was I sucked But it wasn't by my works But I got saved because mercy knocked on my door Then then what happened after I accepted the mercy I didn't do anything to earn it. I got washed and regenerated by the Holy Ghost. Why did I need to be washed and renovated and regenerated? Because I was a sinner. What's God doing hanging around with a bunch of stinking sinners? Because God love. is love. Love goes past your sin, past your faults, past your failures. Love never fails. Love can't be driven away from you. Not divine love. Human love? Oh, that's another story. Happens quite often. Which he shed on us sparingly. We're barely getting by. No! Abundantly in Christ. That means no matter how much sin or how much failure you have, love never fails. Love can't be driven away from you. God likes you. Yeah. How many of you actually have more than, like my grandpa said, does anybody here have more than, I mean five true friends, not acquaintances, I got truckloads of those. How many have you true I mean, they're with you. A friend helps you when you're in deep trouble. Does anybody have more than five? I do, but I don't always talk to them, and I can't. You know, they're not always accessible, like all, all the time. So I have to go to God. Oh, okay. Well, those are pseudo friends. These friends <laughs> will do anything for you when you're down. Okay? Yeah. They'll be there no matter what. I have a few. Most people don't have more than Grandpa said. One hand worth, okay? But with the Holy Ghost, you have a friend that sticks closer than brother because he likes you when nobody else likes you, okay? You know what your problem is, huh? Anybody know? Yeah, you got personality deficits. That's right. Yeah, people don't like you because your personality's jacked up, okay? You're not an interesting person. You're not an exciting person, okay? People don't flock around you looking for autographs, do they? No, you're just a regular person, aren't you? Yeah, guess what? God doesn't care. He wants you, period. You walk out this building tonight and... You're not going to draw a crowd. <laughs> the Holy Ghost walking right after you going, that's somebody I really like. That's a person I'm interested in. I'm going to follow that dude, that gal, I'm going to follow her home. Amen. Why? Because it's abundant. It's not cheap. It's not chiseled out. When I was in church years ago, this new convert guy really bugged me. He was on fire for God. And after you've been in church for a while and saved for a while, you get over that pretty quick. Well, this guy would screw up all the time, and I decided to mentor him so I would meet him down at McDonald's every night at 32nd Street and Greenway. You ever been to that McDonald's? Yep. They renovated it a couple years ago. It's pretty nice now. When I was there years ago, it was ratty. We'd meet there every night. He was broke. I'd buy him dinner. And he would tell me all these errors and sins and mistakes. And we would go over them. Click, 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 click. And he used to frustrate me how God would just act like it never happened. He would bless the guy again, help him again, fix stuff for him, defend him, show up for him. Started getting a little burned out with it. 
I was hoping that, you know, maybe he needed to have his butt kicked for a while. To, no. 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 No, love suffers along. Love doesn't puff itself up. Love's not haughty. Love doesn't take offenses. Now that how much more now since you're washing the blood will you be saved from God's anger? When you were saved from it, when you were a sinner. <laughs> what? You run in a whorehouse and you are unconditionally loved by God? And then you get saved? How much more now will you get God's love than when you were run in a whorehouse? What? Come on. It's abundant. How's it shed abundantly in us? Oh, it's so easy. The divine love of God, the Holy Ghost, comes and moves into your spirit, man. You're there. <coughs> You got him. You can't lose. Why? It's unconditional love. No matter what you do or say. I'm not saying he approves of sin. Don't, don't send me an email. I never said that. Father hates sin because it allows demons to hurt his children. That hurts him. I'm talking about his attitude, not the devil's attitude. Yeah, you're gonna, if you're going to go out and sin, you say, hey, good Lord, I love you, but you know what? I'm tired of you. Screw you. And you go right out and you start doing everything else. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Ramp it up. Well, you're going to sow what you <coughs> reap what you sow. The demons are going to come after you fast because they know you're born again. And they're scared that you're going to someday turn this thing around and become a dangerous person in the spirit world. So they're going to launch every conceivable attack they can on you to stop you from reaching your destiny. Why? Because demons fight because they're afraid. They're afraid of what you have. It's a person in there. You have the Holy Ghost. Jesus walked somewhere and the demons started screaming. Why? They fight hard because they're scared. Yeah. You ever see that movie? Outlawed with Josie Wales? Clint Eastwood movie? Not much of a lift. <laughs> it ain't. Well, at the end of the movie, uh, Josie Wells gets him a little covey of people at the end of the movie. And they're in Granny's uh, inherited shack. And he's training them on how to fight. Do you remember that scene? And... They've got little crosses in the doors and the windows, so he was showing them how to reload the guns and this and that. And he says to them, when things get really bad and it looks like you're not going to make it, that's when you got to get mad dog mean. <laughs> Do you remember that show? That's exactly what demons are. The demons look at you and they look at you with total disgust and hatred, but they look at him inside there with fear. The Holy Ghost is the only person the demons fear. They don't fear anybody else. Because the Holy Ghost is the verb of the divine trinity. Father's the noun and Jesus is the adjective. If you want to know what the noun is, you've got to look at the adjective. <coughs> Correct? That's what an adjective is by definition. The Holy Ghost is the verb. He does all the work. Translation, he kicks their butts. They get mad dog mean when you use your anointing because they're scared. The Holy Ghost is in you, in your spirit man, and he gives you all these benefits. You already have them all. You have to learn to release them. 
What's the difference between a Christian and a disciple? Easy. The disciple learned how to release what God gave them. The Christians don't. They're ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. They're always sitting on their... That's not the gospel. That's seminary. Nobody gets healed at the seminary. A disciple learns how to release what he already has. You already have the Holy Ghost. He has all the gifts, all the fruit, all the anointing, all the destiny. Everything is there. You haven't learned to release it. Yeah, that's what Paul said in Hebrews, didn't he? Listen, he says, seeing that we are compassed about with such an incredible cloud of witnesses, let us, listen, sum it up quickly, let us change. Translation, go from being a Christian to a disciple. Release what you've already got. God has given to every born-again Christian a measure of faith. You already have. Your miracles you've already got it you haven't released it why it's a simple parable of the sower you let other things in to distract you the lusts of other things the anxieties of life and it blocked you releasing your gifts you already have it you have to learn to release it. Well, I'm backslidden right now. Doesn't matter. Love never fails. Love can't be driven out. Love is not haughty. Oh, you, you screwed up, huh? Oh, really? It's not going to happen. Love doesn't nitpick you. It's not happening. It's happening in your mind because that's what the demons told you. They lie all the time because they're scared. They're petrified that you, as a schizophrenic, will become delivered and then you become an incredibly dangerous person. That's right. Can you imagine a schizophrenic getting completely delivered and the other schizophrenics who now have hope? Demons fear you you being delivered. They're scared you'll get healed. Why? Because you'll cause them nothing but a headache. They're frightened. First John 4. There it is. We love him because he first showed us love. I love you. Not going to work. It's not going to work. I love you. I want you to show me you love me. Yeah. Now, showing you love someone needs to have what we call timing. If I get up in the morning and I sneak out to the kitchen, and my wife is in a certain mood. She's not here. She, she went home. <laughs> and I pounce. Not now. Not, and then, I, then I back off. See? And then I go over and get my vitamins. <laughs> see, you got to time it right. God timed it perfectly. He sent Jesus Christ to the cross. He resurrected him from the dead. You're in. His timing was impeccable. <coughs> what? Oh, this can't be true. It sure is. Did you know that you were born in sin? You wear that? You are now. There it is. Did you know that you got your sin from Adam? Were you aware of that? Romans 5.12. 
Did you know our bodies all die because of Adam's sin? Correct? Death passed upon all men. Diarchoma is into all men. It transferred into all men from Adam. For all have sinned. This is the Greek word for sin. It means to miss the bullseye. It means to miss the target. Miss the shot. When you sin, you are missing the holy bullseye. Right? You're sinning and you're missing holiness and perfection and righteousness. That's when you're sinning. All have sinned. Everyone has failed. Everyone has done that. Job 25, how then can a man be justified with God who is born of a woman? Here's how. Job didn't know that. What is man that he should be clean and which is born of a woman? How can someone ever be clean born of a woman? Well, let's go back to our sex ed class and add some information to it. Your sin came from Adam. And it came from your dad. Not your mom. It's transferred through the sperm. You have a sin gene. Adam, dad, 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 you. I shortened it. I mean, quite a bit longer than that, but you didn't get your sin from your mom. You got it from your dad. How can a woman be born? How can a man be born of a woman and then end up sinless? It's impossible. It is unless you didn't have a dad. Let me think of some person that didn't have a dad. Let me hold on a minute. Mm. Oh, geez, it's gone. Okay. Wish I could come up with that one. The Holy Ghost came to Mary. Jesus had no human dad. Joseph was stepdad. So he was not born in sin. I was born in sin because my dad gave me the sin gene. It transfers at conception. You were born in sin. Yep. Everything about you, body, soul, spirit, mind, and conscience, everything is going to die and go to hell. Because you were born in sin. End of story. Oops. Unless you're washed in the blood of the Lamb. Then your spirit man becomes perfect in the eyes of God. Your spirit man, the Bible says, is resurrected from the dead. And it is sinless perfection. The rest of the person is not. So that means the rest of the person, this body, dies because of Adam, but I will never die. Correct? Because I was born again. And my spirit man is no longer born in sin. Your spirit man is sinless. Even though your body may be sinning, your spirit man is sinless. No one who's born in sin can go to heaven. You have to be reborn.
This makes sense. It's that easy. It came down from Adam, went down through everybody's dad, and nailed you in the womb. Or the test tube, depending upon where you came from. Doesn't matter. Sperm, die. Sperm, die. Everybody dies. Unless your spirit man is reborn. Then you never die. While you're busy running yourself down and criticizing yourself and feeling down, you have forgotten that your spirit man is still perfect. First John chapter 3. Let's go over some trouble verses here. They don't make sense in the King James. Bible and they don't make too much sense in English in the other translation in either because we're using English He that commits sin is of the devil now that sounds like a bad situation But that's not what it said <clears throat> Everybody sins Everybody does. I've never met a Christian who doesn't sin and some sin more than others, obviously. Poyeo means to practice sinning. <clears throat> Practicing, living in sin. That person is of the devil. Or ek comes out of the devil. That's what I was doing when I was a sinner. I was practicing living in repetitive sin. I was doing it and enjoyed some of it. I was looking to get more of it. I was sinning. I like sinning. I didn't like paying for my sin, you know, but there was a lot of sinning I sure enjoyed. Right? Yeah. I enjoyed getting drunk. I enjoyed chasing gals. Uh, you know, I did the usual stuff. Nothing like you guys, but I mean, yeah, I did a lot of stuff. With you guys are a bunch of heathens, but I was a, basically, a, I was a good sinner, unlike, unlike when the four sons got a lot of bad people here. But check it out. This thing started out with the devil. He, he was the first one, and there went the first domino. Click is what he's saying here. Okay? So if you sin, click. You can't lose your salvation. Okay, I sinned today. I lost my salvation. That's a false doctrine. That's a lie. Your spirit, man, did not become unsanctified just because you failed or, or sinned today. That did not happen. Did you sin today, sir? You did? Why well, be ashamed? You say, can somebody get this? No. That, did you lose your salvation today? He hopes not. Oh, God. Rick, Rick, over here. Got a checker shirt. Let me ask somebody else if they can give me a better answer. Did you sin today? Yes, probably. Oh, geez, now. He just, he just sinned right now and lied to me. Rick, watch this guy in the striped shirt. This guy's, he's a loser. All right, let's go. What's the point? If you sin today and you think you lost your salvation, you're being deceived by Satan. You're being lied to. And he's doing that to get you to question your position in Christ. Once you start questioning your position in Christ, your miracles stop and your answers to prayer quit. That's why he does it. The devil's not stupid like Christian. He thanks before he does stuff. No. Practicing sinning is different from sinning here and there. You, you relapsed and you're trying to overcome it. So you repent. Then you relapse again. Then you repent it. That's not practicing sin. That's trying to get out of it. If that makes any sense. Practicing sin is something you like doing and you're just doing it because you enjoy it and that's what you do. Okay. John 3, he that believes, Pistuo, steps out 
verb does something on Christ is not judged. What? This is nuts. You mean to tell me, Brother Mike, nobody else likes me, but God does? And very few people love me, but God unconditionally loves me? Is that what you're telling me? That's exactly what the Word of God is telling you. That's exactly what it says. You mean to tell me that God actually likes me? Yes. Yes, because your spirit man is perfect. What's not to like about it? That was a question. Can you answer that? What's not to like about your spirit man in perfect condition? Resurrected from the dead. Quickened is what the King James Bible uses. You have been quickened in your spirit man. And love doesn't nitpick you, right? Yeah, God does not even judge you anymore. You were judged at Calvary. You can't lose unless you decide to. And that's what I'm trying to talk you out of tonight. <laughs> he that believes is not judged already. Because he, he that believes not, excuse me, is not, is judged already. Wait a minute. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. That's right. When I was a sinner... <coughs> I was judged a sinner and condemned to eternal death. But mercy knocked on my do door. Why? I was unconditionally loved. Even though I was sinning, God liked me, not my sin. See? So that's something your spouse has difficulty doing. Uh, separating you from your behavior, but the divine power of God separates you from your sin. God sees you. I like you. I don't like what you said or did. There's a difference. The devil wants you to blend it all together. So you get discouraged, give up, and quit. This is the condemnation. Okay, now this is a different Greek word, krisis. The other one was krino, which means to, to evaluate you and come to a conclusion about you and then pass a sentence on you. Cresis is to evaluate you, examine you. But it sounds like the same word in English, so it's giving a bad translation here. This is the God's evaluation of it. Light has come into humanity and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were us, perverted. Men loved darkness. That was me as a sinner. I liked agapao. I loved darkness. I put my affection on <coughs> money and party and women and this and that and that. See, I put my affection. I did that. I was showing I did it. You could tell I liked it. I like darkness. I didn't even know it. Why? Because my deeds were perverted. Lying is perverted. Adultery is perverted. Getting drunk is perverted. I don't want to go into the stuff you've done. That was just mine. <laughs> It's all a perversion from truth and holiness and divinity. See that? It's darkness. There was darkness in my spirit, man. I was lost for eternity. I had been born in sin, and I practiced sin. I was in a hopeless state, completely unable to save myself, hopelessly lost. I was eternally screwed but unconditional love that never fails knocked on my door. Mike, Mike, 
Mike, mercy is here. You didn't earn any of it. And I came to your door, you didn't come to mine. So you think you got saved and you did things. You're, you're in a delusion. The Holy Ghost drew you in, the Bible says. He pulls you in. Why? Unconditional love. He likes you. If he liked you when you were a sinner, how much more? Now that you've been justified by the blood, will you be saved from God's anger? That kid that shot all them students up the other day, he was mentally ill. Believe it or not, that murderer is unconditionally loved. If anybody knew that, the press would be all over the good Lord. They would rip him up one side, down the other. Yeah. He's politically and every other way incorrect. Don't you understand that mentally ill kid that shot them kids? One of these days, somebody's going to knock on his door. Guess what it is? Mercy's calling on that kid. He'll be in an institution 10 years from now, and they'll have a chapel service in there. Father will reach over. Oh, I know that's not politically correct. Yeah, I'll get an email on that one. You don't understand. It happened to Son of Sam in New Jersey. Mercy knocked on the door to chapel service. Shooting people like boom, 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 boom. When you were yet sinners, Christ died for you. Boom, 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 boom. Christ died for you. Boom, 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 boom. Well, this is getting too real. This is what it is. It's reality. This is the reality. I know it sounds nuts. Crazy love is crazy. This is how Father sees it. I'm, I'm telling you how God thinks, not how you think or somebody else thinks. Or the goofs on TV. This is how Father thinks. I know this is going to sound bad for the Lord, but God loves perverts. Nobody else really has that much fondness for them. There's not a real market for pedophiles. And people are not rushing over there to congratulate them and love on them. Father loves pedophiles. Does he like what they did? Oh, you got to be kidding me. He's appalled at child abuse. Appalled at it. Person, sin, he's able to do it. We are not. We just judge the book by a cover. Shoot the guy. Kill him. Get. Everyone that practices evil hates light. Of course. I didn't want to be told that what I was doing was sinful when I was living in sin. What are you talking about? I'm just having a good time. What are you, nuts? I don't want to hear that. By the way, that's very much kind of like Christians do. <laughs> you tell them that they need to make some changes and it's like, you know, you told them to get their head amputated. I mean, they're like freaking. But the only way you're ever going to fulfill your destiny is if you renew your mind on God's love and change your life based on love. See, if you stop sinning because somebody told you God's going to kick your face in, that's legalism. That's not love. When you love someone, you don't want to hurt them. Amen. Correct? Yes, sir. That's what John said. People who don't understand the love of God don't understand God. They don't understand love. I do not want to <laughs> sin. I don't. I really don't. Not because I want to get brownie points with God, but because I don't want to hurt his feelings. Because when you love somebody, you don't want to stab him in the back. It's common sense, isn't it? If you don't love somebody, you don't care about them. Ah, ah, cool. 
get lost. What is God doing right now? He can't help himself. You don't understand. He cannot stop. He can't control it. He's out of control. He can't stop it. He cannot stop love. He can't stop it. It's not a switch you flick on and off. Click, no love. Oh, let's see, love. No, no. Yeah. No. The switch is always on. It never switches off. He can't control himself. For this purpose was the Son of God manifested that he might loose you from the works of the devil. Why? Because God loves you and doesn't want you dominated by Satan. Matthew 8, Behold, there came a leper worshiping him, saying, Lord, if you, Thalo, want to, you can make me clean. And God said, I, Thalo, I want to be clean. Why? Love. Healed that leper. What actually happened there technically? Well, Jesus said, I only do the things I see my father doing. I only speak the things I hear him say. While this leper is coming up here, father is speaking to him. And he's saying, that's someone I really like. I like lepers. I love that person. He heard him say it, correct? And so Jesus simply repeated what he heard. Father heard the leper go, hey, if you want to, you can. And Father said, I want to. And Jesus said, I want to. Nobody likes lepers. That's not a fun day. Father likes lepers. Luke chapter 12. Jesus said to you, because I love you so much, because Father loves you so much, because it's unconditional love, you don't have to go around hunting down for your necessities. Nor do you have to get involved in spiritual activities to get it. Meteor Izumai is a term used to describe people that go get help through the spirit world. In a way, kind of like a seance. They, people go to seances. They want to know who they're supposed to marry. Or what kind of career they're supposed to have. Well, then they want information. Okay. I watch a show on TV called Hollywood, Hollywood uh, Medium. Is that the name of that show? What's that guy's name? I just drew a blank on that kid. <clears throat> I like to watch that so because I like to see how demons trick people. And I listen to what he tells them. He's chock full of demons and he's telling them stuff. And I like to listen to see how the demons are deceiving these movie stars. And they go to see this guy, Matthew Henry. Tyler. Matthew Tyler. <laughs> Tyler Henry. Tyler Henry. I knew that, but I knew that these three people over there didn't, so I was testing them. That's how you get people to listen. Yes, sir. This this Tyler guy. This guy's got massive demonic anointing, to use a bad word for that. I mean, this guy is the real deal. And the demons not only tell him stuff about these people, but they he they they give him the feelings and the sensations of what he's channeling. He gets pains, he gets sick, he heaves sweat, uh, he gets emotional, he has fears, while this thing's channeling out to the person. They're telling them, "Hey, you know your uncle's fine. Uh, he was telling he, he, there's nothing could have been done." Uh, uh, he loves you. He's fine. And Fido's over there. And there, he's barking now. I hear him barking. That kind of crap. It channels through. It's all demonic. None of that stuff's real. It's all demons faking everybody out. And 
that is an example there of Maybe your Edomites looking into the spirit world trying to get answers. You don't need to do that because you are unconditionally loved by God and Your God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory as a child of God you are automatically on the list for having your needs met. You're already on the list and you don't even have to pray about it. Do not go seeking out, hunting down things you need. All these things the nations of the world search for. Your father, Edu, sees what you need. Why does he care to look at your needs before you need them? Because you are unconditionally loved. And you are liked by God. He's fond of you, Philadelphia. He's already provided for all your needs. He wants you to seek first the kingdom of God and God's righteousness and all these things will just be prosthetomy laid down beside you. You're not getting it. Human beings do that, don't they? Yeah. Parents, get stuff for their kids that kids don't ask for. Uh, they'll go shopping for them. They'll buy winter clothes or summer clothes. They'll buy stuff for school. They'll uh, pay a bill. They'll do different things that the kid doesn't ask for. Why? The parent loves the child. And they don't have to sit there asking them 50,000 50, times Could I have dinner? Can I have dinner? Could you feed me dinner? Can, I need some shoes. I need my shoes. Are, can I have shoes? Can I have shoes? Will you give me shoes? Help me with my shoes. Give me shoes. The kid doesn't have to ask for the stuff in a, in a normal family. The parents already see what the kid needs and provide it anyway. God doesn't want you to waste your life constantly praying about stuff he's already told you you could have. He wants you to pray for somebody else in need. If God didn't provide this benefit, Christianity would never have gotten out of Jerusalem because everybody would have spent all their time and energy praying for their own personal needs. <clears throat> You've already been provided your own personal needs without having to ask for them. I would be worn out if I had to pray for all my every single need. My biggest need is to get my wife to meet all my needs. <laughs> That prayer has never been answered. Now I'm mad at God. You don't understand. God told you I'm going to take care of you. If you don't believe that and you don't understand God's love, then your needs don't get met. If you think you've got to ask God for everything you need, you're in deep trouble. What if you forget something? Yes, sir. Trust me. When you get a little older, in the 60s, you know, stuff starts to shift. I'm not as pinpoint accurate as I used to be. I know that's leaving you in a state of complete shock. <laughs> Dear Lord, can I, I need clothes. I need food. I need a car. I need transfer. Stop it! Stop! That's already covered in the atonement. Your needs are already covered. He sees what you need before you ask him. If you will seek the will of God, if you will seek God's will for your life, 
all these things just brought over and laid down there. There's your shoes. There's your shirt. There's your. That's what parents do. Good parents, right? They go that. They just go to the store. They know what size the kids wear. There's the new shoes. Here's new shirt. Here's a. They go to the store. They bring home groceries, right? They don't. Here's the groceries. The, the kid wasn't praying. Listen, can I have this and that and this and that and this? And if, if they forgot to pray for one of them, then she didn't buy that. No. The parent sees what the child needs and gets it for them anyway. You're wasting your life praying for all your needs. He doesn't want you to do that. I got that covered. Pray for this person or that person or that thing. Put your prayers there where they do somebody some good. Not just always praying about you. I know this is going to stun you, but everything in the world isn't about you. <laughs> oh, can't believe it. Elizabeth. Fear not, little flock. It's your father's. He wants to give it to you. He likes giving things. He likes loving because he can't change. He's stuck in that mode. He's not going to change because you make an incredible amount of mistakes. I don't know who you think you are, but you're not that powerful. Ephesians 2, when we were dead in sins, he quickened us together with Christ and raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places. What does that mean? Well, that verse has been misinterpreted constantly, particularly on TV preachers. That's not heaven, heaven, or in us, it's Aperonius. It's the earth's atmosphere. See that section around the earth there? See that? There it is. It's the atmosphere. What's he telling you? It's symbolic. Hey, when you become a born-again Christian, you get the Holy Ghost. You are now above the fray. You're not down in the muck anymore. You're up here. You're winning. I am seated in heaven, the atmosphere. I'm above all this now. I'm in Christ. I don't have to do what the world does and seek every little thing out for me. Father's got that covered. I'm in. Why? I'm unconditionally loved. In addition to that, he likes me. There's a difference between love and like. Ask any mother. You love these kids, but you don't really like them. <laughs> right? Don't raise your hand. They're out there. That in the ages to come, what God has a secret plan here for you. He's got a secret plan. I'm going to reveal it tonight. I'm going to expose God. <laughs> he thought he was going to get past me on this one, but I caught him. God's doing all these incredible things, unconditionally loving you when you were living in sin, unconditionally love you if you sin now. Being fond of you, even though you're a failure and sinning. Why is he doing all that stuff? Why, why is he sending you mercy? Why is he doing that? He's got a big plan. Here it is. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ. What's he doing? He's using you to show off You are his trophy case. Angels are not. Angels are here. We're here. Did you know that? Yeah. How much faith does it take to be an angel? Zero. Why? Why? They see everything exactly. Hey, I believe in God too if I was standing there looking at the throne room. 
What kind of faith does that require? None. Living in Phoenix? Hey, that's going to take some faith. Oh, yeah, particularly in the summer. Yeah, it takes a lot of faith. You are his trophy in eternity because he saved you, showing off his grace. And you received it, not because you earned it, but because you accepted it by faith, simply because he said it. Angels can't do that. They don't need faith. What do you need faith for? You got everything. <laughs> if you don't have any needs at all, period, zero, not even a fractional need, what faith does it take to survive? Nothing. It's no big deal to be an angel. They see everything. They got everything. Oh, that's a tough life, isn't it? That's really difficult. Oh, that's a really stressful situation. I'll tell you what's stressful. Fighting off the devil and demons and unbelief and doubt and crazy relatives and imbeciles at work and psychos on the street. That's tough. If you don't believe me, ask Robert. Look, it's not our works. Father wants to boast about you. He doesn't want us boasting about ourselves. You are God's trophy. That's who you are. And he's trying to add as many of these trophies as he possibly can before it's over. That's all he cares about. He can't stop himself. He's constantly looking for a new person to put in the trophy case. What's going to happen here? Well, it's up to you. You do not have to receive the unconditional love of God or the fondness of God or his blessings. You do not have to be quickened in your spirit, man. You do not have to receive eternal life. You don't have to receive all your needs met without even praying for it. You don't need to do nothing. It's all up to you. You choose. You can choose other gods. You can choose no God. You can choose to go to hell. You can choose to destroy yourself. You can choose to ch do what... That's what I was doing as a sinner. I chose what I wanted to do. I did these things over here I had to do, and then I chose these other things. Proverbs 1. You have to choose to reverence God. The Jews did not. They did not want to listen. Very common for a Christian. Very rare for a disciple. Disciples listen. Christians don't. They think they know everything. Therefore what? The same thing is true in the dispensation of grace. You reap what you sow. <coughs> If you don't believe God loves you, if you think he's nitpicking you, and you're going to get down and depressed, and you're going to think he's unapproachable. Nobody wants to come to a God they think's nitpicking them. Nobody wants to be around another human that's nitpicking them. That happens at work all the time. What's God saying to everybody? Come get it. What's God want to do with everybody? God is not a tardy person. He never shows up late. He wants everyone to be saved. Everyone. Yeah. School shooters, pedophiles, rapists, murderers, arsonists, adulterers, witches, warlocks. Did I miss somebody? He wants everyone to be saved. What's God saying to you tonight? Hey, I love you unconditionally, but you have to choose. 
I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, says the Lord. I set before you life and death, blessings and cursings. Therefore, he recommends you do what? Yes, choose life so you and your family can live. Uh -huh. When the demons come down the family tree, they take the parents and then they take the kids. That's their job. That's what they do. When the demons come down the family tree, somebody dies, the demons stay in that tree and attack another relative. Usually at the funeral or shortly thereafter, they infect somebody else in the family. That's how it works. Why? You notice that your kids have the same sinful behaviors the parents usually do, only they get worse. Each succeeding generation gets worse. Your time is running out. Let's conclude with these simple facts. <laughs> yes, sir. Every year, <coughs> two and a half million Americans kick the bucket. They kick it at about the age of 78. Correct? And they normally die from what? Heart disease, um, because we are a land of plenty, correct? Anytime you give human beings too much, they always abuse it. It's human nature. So if they give them too much hedonism, too much food, too much, too much drug, they'll abuse it. Too much prosperity, oh, bad. Cancer is next. Strokes are next. So on. Accidents are next. Here's the list. Here's the number of people that are going to die. Yep. <coughs> Diabetes. That one's must have moved up by now. The flu. Oh, this year's been real bad. Your time is running out. It's running out fast. Any questions before we close? Good. Thank you, Jim. Let's pray then. Father God, uh, I did everything I could tonight to explain how much you love us, and how much you care. And that's the end for me. The Holy Spirit has to do this. The Holy Spirit has to do this. Or nothing's going to get done. Nothing. It's the Holy Ghost or bust. There's some people here tonight, Lord, who feel like you're angry at them, or you're disappointed at them, or you find them disgusting when they sin, or you criticize them, you're running them down. And those are all lies. You're never doing that. I have several friends here tonight, Lord, that are going through their deliverance, and the demons are fighting them every step of the way. And it's a terrible fight. And some of them get discouraged. They take a break. They want to quit. They relapse. Because the devil keeps telling them that you're disappointed in them and you're not. He keeps telling them that you're watching every false move they make every little sin and you're not the devil keeps telling them that you're criticizing them and you're not and for each person in that category tonight Lord I'm asking you give them encouragement and hope 
strengthen them <coughs> because you're always 100% on their side 100% on their side at all times and you will never leave them or forsake them Lord some of my friends here tonight are living in sin they're practicing sin in certain areas of their life and the devil is making them pay a terrible price for it he's hurting them he's stealing their money He's stealing their health. He's attacking them through their family and their friends. He lays them off. I pray for each one of them right now that you will give them strength tonight to repent of their sin and to change. Not so you will love them. You already love them. But so the devil will have to take his hands off their throat. For whatever we sow, we're going to reap. If we sow to the flesh, we reap judgment from Satan. If we sow to the Spirit, we reap life everlasting. Now, if you're having trouble believing that God unconditionally loves you, and you've had love issues with God over the years, up and down, just raise your hand so we can pray for you. There's one, there's two, and another one. There's one there, there's one there. Okay, great. Now just stand up where you are, right there. Just stand up. Don't come down here yet. Just stand up right there in your seat. If you raised your hand, just stand up real quick. Okay, ministry team, see them people standing there? Can you come over? Can you come over for a minute? Okay, just pray with me right now. Father God, I ask you to forgive me right now for ever thinking you stopped loving me. I want you to forgive me for ever having the thought that you abandoned me. I want you to forgive me for thinking you were criticizing me when I failed and when I sinned. I want you to forgive me. I want to repent of this. That's a false doctrine. It is a lie from Satan, and if I keep believing this, I'm never going to find my destiny. I'm never going to be healed, and I'm never going to be delivered. And I'm going to repent of this thing right this second. I'm going to repent of it right now. Go ahead. Just say it. Dear Jesus, I'm so sorry I ever thought you would ever stop unconditionally loving me. Please forgive me for that. Just confess it. Just say it. Father, I'm so sorry. That is a lie from Satan. I am listening to lies. I am living in lies. And as long as I do that, the devil is going to continue to beat on me. And I will never be free. Well, tonight, I've decided to be free. I've decided to be free tonight, no matter what. I am unconditionally loved by you, Lord. Unconditionally loved by you. And that truth I'm going to keep for the rest of my life. I'm not going to turn my back on it again. Satan, in the name of Jesus, I bind your power and your lies. I bind those negative thoughts. And I command you to come out of my head right this second. I bind those unloving thoughts you put in my head. Come out of my mind right now. That is a lie from the pits of hell. I am unconditionally loved by God. I am unconditionally loved by God. I'm going to repent of this right now. I'm going to repent of it right this second. In the name of Jesus. I'm going to repent right now. I'm going to repent right this second. Right now, I'm going to repent of it. Testing. Okay, what's your name, sir? First name? Eric. Pardon? Lack of faith in him and his love for me. 
because I failed him many times. Um, probably just frustration about being in sin and stuff like that, and just being delusional in my mind over that. Okay. Did you did you hear what they just said? That that is very common. That's a common response. It was just taught from my home life, so I just transferred to habit. Are you going to repent of that? I believe the lies. The lies uh, of who God isn't. Um, he's not unloving. He's not unloving. I have joy in the king. What I see that what God love, how I see in him love me. But how can I know that he loves them? Why he did not stop me for loving him? Oh, okay. That's a great answer. Bad people blame God for bad things. I just struggle to believe it, I guess. I, I'm not sure. Reason. I, I'm not sure what it is. Did your mother love you? Um, she said she did, yeah. Did your father love you? Can't say that, no. Did your mother act like she loved you? Uh, I think so. Why did she love you? I don't know, I had a hard, hard time accepting her love. Isn't it true you have a hard time accepting any kind of love? Probably so. Would you be willing to repent of that tonight? Did you see those scriptures I put up there? God said he love unconditionally loves you. Would you be willing to accept that? Why did you think God didn't love you? I've been abused my whole life, and I turned to drugs. And um, when you turn to drugs, you believe that um, the way you feel is the truth, and it's not. And when you succumb to that, then any thought that enters your head, you will be con convinced of it. And that's why. Come on up here. That was great. That was great. Did you hear those answers? You see, all, they're all delusions. They're not true. If God told you, I love you, if you don't accept it or believe it, you're in essence calling him a liar. <coughs> like a con artist. Correct? If God says this and you don't believe it, what you're really saying is, it's not true. He knows it's a delusion, and so does that guy. Did you hear what he said? You used the word delusion. He did too. It's a delusion. It's not real. Okay, come on up. If you raise your hand, come on up. We want to pray for you now. Come up to the front here. Hmm? No, I'm in the past. I'm saying what I thought in the past, but right now I've changed my ways, and I, I know he loves me. It was just a mistake. It was, you know, the devil lying to me. Okay. Did you hear that? Can everybody do what this guy did tonight? Could you do that? Yes. Here, just face me here. I'm going to pray for you. Now, ministry team's going to come up and help me. Stand right here. How come you didn't think God? Because I was told my whole life I was unlovable, and no one liked me, and I believed the lies. The lies, well said. Don't you see how the devil tricks everybody? Do you hear these answers? These answers are better teaching than anything I could do. Right? These are, these are the real life answers of how the devil tricks people into thinking they're not loved. You see that? 
the devil tells you because somebody else didn't love you and somebody else abused you, that's how God feels about you. And like you said, that's a delusion. He doesn't think like other people. He doesn't believe what other people think. He doesn't believe it. Right? Just because somebody doesn't like you, that's got nothing to do with God. Are you going to repent of your lies and your families? Yes. Are you going to stop having bad feelings about your parents? Yes. Tonight? Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you, Jesus. Close your eyes now. Let's pray. Father God, I rounded up the people tonight that uh, want to be healed. There was uh, four or five more out there who had questioned God's love, but they didn't raise their hands. So... I ask you to go with them tonight and bless them. But these that have come forward, they are to be healed. They are to be healed. Okay? I'm going to show you a sh quick little trick on how to fix this problem. Okay? What you do is you close your eyes. I'll try you. Let me just stand here for a second. Close your eyes. Okay? Close your eyes there and you take a big breath. Big breath. Good. Take another one. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to come in now and remove these lies about love. Breathe. Feel that jerk? Breathe. Heal. Heal. Spirit of hate, come out and love go in. Out. I'm out. Unloving, come out. There he is. It's his fear spirit. Come out of that body right now. Go. Breathe. Take a big breath. Breathe and release it. There you go. Just release it. Right now, I release those lies and those delusions out of my body right now in Jesus' holy name. Come out of me right now. In the name of Jesus, come out of my lungs. Come out of there. Hurry up. Come out of that body. Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Drugs, lies, delusions, drugs. Come out right now. Drugs, lies, delusions, drugs. Come out right now. Drugs. Come out right now. Lies that I am not loved. Go. Come out right now. Come out, breathe, take a big breath. There he is. Jump, breathe, take a big breath. Breathe in hard. Holy Spirit, come in. Good. Holy Spirit, come in. Breathe. Good. Breathe. There he comes. Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Take a big breath and breathe. Big breath. Big breath. Big breath. Big breath. Big breath. Holy Spirit, come in. Holy Spirit, come in right now. Go. Holy Spirit, come in. Big breath. Come out and Holy Spirit, come in. Breathe. There it is. Take a big breath. Go. Take a big breath. Breathe. Take a big breath. Breathe. Come out. Lies come out. I forgive them now so I can Lies come out. Come out. Now come out of her come right out. now. Come out of her right now. Go. Who heard that prayer? Come out of her now. Go. Who heard that prayer? Come out of her now. Lies come out. You heard that prayer. Come out of her now. Go. Go. Come out of there. Anxiety. Curses. Come out. 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 Curses.
Stop. <laughs> Satan, I hate you. I hate you. 
Lord Jesus, I love you, Lord. I love you, Jesus. Satan, come out! Come out! Go! Satan, I take command over you right now. I am unconditionally loved. I am loved by God. I am never not loved. You lied to me. You're going to pay for it. You lied to me. You made a fool out of me. You're going to pay for it. You're going to pay for it. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, dear Lord. Reach out with faith. Do your best. There you go. Good. I bind your power, Satan. I bind your power, Satan. And I command you, go. Spirit of fear, I bind you tonight. I bind you, spirit of fear and anxiety. And I command you in the name of Jesus to come out right now. Get out of that body right now. Demon of sin, come out. This demon of sin. Come out. Come out of there. Come out. Spirit of sin. Evil, come out. Evil. Evil. Come out of there. Evil. Hold that. Come out right now. Evil. 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 Wickedness. Evil. Go. Fantasy lust. Fantasy lust. I repent for having negative you thoughts. You were supposed to call her and do that. Keep in touch. You were supposed to call her and tell her you were sorry. And apologize. That was it. You're not supposed to be in power. You're supposed to be healed. I repent. I repent of my mother's demons. I repent of my mother's demons right now. Come out of that body right now. Get out of there. Where are you going? Come here. Set, get her Sit down. Sit down. Get out of there. Get out of that body right now. Come out. 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 Come out.
Just repent of it.
open up, 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 open up,
In the right heel? We claim healing right now. Claim healing in this bone spur. Holy Ghost, melt this, melt this down. Melt this down so it's not irritated anymore. Bone spur, you gotta go right now. Right now. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit healing right now. Heal her. Heal her. Bone spur, you gotta go. Bone spur, you gotta go. All pain, come on. Right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Bone spur, go. 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 Hurry. Go. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry. Come out. Hurry. Hurry, come out. Get out of there. You're out there. Hurry up. Come on, there you go. Come on, there you go. Come on, now. Come out quickly. Quickly. Quicker. Get out of there. Sin, wickedness, evil. Oh. Wickedness and evil. Get out of that body. Get out of his chest. You're not going to kill him with a heart attack. Heart attack. Oh. There he is. There he is. Heart attack. Come on. Oh. Come on. Come out. Come out right now. Go. All the men. Everyone. <laughs> Get up! Get up! Get up! Get up! Hurry up! Hurry up! Hurry up! You cannot go light on the devil. You have to fight him back hard. If you go light on the devil, he will kick your face in when you least expect it. The demons will trash you when you least expect it. When you get a chance to fight with the anointing, you better take it. You better take it and fight back now. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Get out of that body right now. Go. I command you, Satan, by the authority of the Word of God, by the power of the Holy Ghost, get out. Come out of me. I repent of witchcraft, of sorcery, seances, horoscopes. I curse it. I turn my back on it now. Horoscope, come out of me. Horoscope, come out of me. There they go. Horoscope, come out of me. Fears, come out of me right now. Fear, come out in Jesus' mighty name. Anxiety, I command you to bow. Bow to the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Come on, ladies. Every ugly man that trashed you, used you, trashed you out, comes out now. Come out of there. They used your body for sex. They used your money. They lied to you. They cheated on you. We are going to forgive them 100%. We are going to forgive them right now. Father, in Jesus' holy name, I forgive everything he done to me. Every lie, every moment he lied, every minute he let me down, every second, come out faster, every second he let me down, right now, come on guys, come on guys, you used to whore around, you know you did, you used to whore around, you picked up, you picked up a spirit from every woman you committed adultery with, every one of them. So if you, you slept with 100 women, you picked up at least 100 demons. At least. That's at a minimum. Just repent of it. Just repent. Just repent of it. I command sex addiction to come out of me. Come out. Come out quicker. Come out quicker, Satan. Satan, I command you by the authority of the Word of God. Get out. Come out right now. 
Hold back. Hold back. Come out right now. Go. Come out. Hurry up. Stop staying in there. Come out. Stop recycling demons. Come out right now. Come out right now. Every man, every one of them, all of them, right there. They go. And we used to be a player. Hey, when you were a player, you signed your death warrant. Yeah, you signed your death warrant. All them girls, you're dead. Come on, just repent of it. Just confess it. Lord, I ask you to give my friends godly sorrow. Godly sorrow for their sin. Anger for the devil. Here comes Raja. Being attacked in the Listen carefully, you gotta fight. But I bind the spirit of mental illness. I bind you, devil. Bind your power. Seducing spirit, I command you to come out of my head and stop telling me lies. Get out. Come on, that body right now. Go. I repent of hating my body. Body dysmorphia, I command you. I bind your power in Jesus' holy name. I command you to go. Get out. Get out of there. Come out of my body right now. Hurry up. Leave me now. Hurry up. Thus saith the Lord. YouTubers, put your hand right on your body. If you got a mental illness, put your hands on the side of your head. Put your hands on your head. And take authority over that spirit in your brain. Take authority over that spirit in your brain. By the authority of the Word of God. By the authority of the Word of God. I command. I command every lie. Every lying spirit, every seducing spirit, every mind control spirit, every spirit in my brain, I bind it and I command it to go. Get out of my head. Get out of my body. Right now. Lies, false beliefs, religious beliefs, I command you to come out. I bind every evil spirit from Mormonism in my family tree. I bind every spirit from the Jehovah's Witnesses, Christadelphianism. I bind it in Jesus' name. I bind every spirit from Islam. I bind you in Jesus' name. Allah, come out. Muhammad, come out. Go in the name of the Lord. I bind every evil witchcraft spirit in the room tonight. 
Every single one of them. Seances, horoscopes, Ouija board demons. Ouija board. Light as the feather spirits. Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary, I command you in the name of the Lord. Bloody Mary. Come out, Bloody Mary. Go. Go now. Get out now. Every lying spirit that told me God is criticizing me or net picking me, that's a lie from the pits of hell. I do not believe that anymore. I do not believe that anymore. You're lying to me, devil. I command you to stop. Stop right now. Stop it. Stop it. The first thing you got to do with the demons is tell them to stop. That's your first step. Stop. You don't need a Bible college degree to learn to cast out demons. Anybody can do it. Anybody can do it. You got to take it in steps. The first step is stop. Stop it. Stop talking to me. Stop putting thoughts in my head. Stop it. Second, number two, you got to convince the demons you mean business. You got to convince them you, you believe it. If you doubt or you have unbelief, they will sense that and pick it up. And they won't go. They will not go. You have to believe it. You have to fight for your life. You got to push it. Push it is what you got to do. Push it. I know what you're thinking. I'm tired. I'm pooped. This deliverance thing's taking too long. You've got to take every thought captive. You've got to take every negative thought captive. You have to forgive everybody. Spirit of whoredom, whoredom, come out of my body right now. There he is. Come out of there, you whore. Come out right now. Come out. Promiscuity. Promiscuity. Come out of there. Come out. Oral sex. Come out of my mouth right now. Oral sex. Go. Come out of my mouth. Quickly. Come out quickly. Fornication. Adultery. Whoredom. Come out of my body right now. Come out. There it comes. If you were promiscuous when you were younger, hey, you signed your death warrant. You picked up evil spirits. If you went to prostitutes when you were younger, you went to a prostitute, you got to be kidding. You take your life in your hands when you go see a prostitute. A demon transfers in 100% of every person that goes to a prostitute. 100% of them pick up a spirit. You can't help it. Even if you do not have intercourse with a prostitute, you can pick up a spirit. Oral sex is sex. Sorry, Bill. Perversion spirits. There he comes. Here he comes. Come at you, pervert. You picked up a pervert from somebody you slept with. Poneros is the Greek word. It means perversion. Perversion. You picked up a pervert. You got to get rid of your perverts. You say, well, I'm not dating that person anymore. It doesn't matter. They're not the pervert. It's the spirit that's a pervert. The spirit's a pervert. If you've been on the internet watching pornography, you picked up perversion spirits. Perverts. These spirits are perverts. They give you urges you don't want. Come out right now. Get out. Come out of there right now. Go. Come out. Come out. Go. Come out. Internet porn. I bind your power. I'm telling you to come out in the name of the Lord. Internet pornography. Come out now. Come out. 
Hurry up. Hurry up, I said. Internet porn. Come out quickly. Come out quickly. Quickly. Heal. Quickly. Quickly. Quicker. Quicker. Internet porn. Come out quick. Quick. Masturbating to pornography. Come out right now. Go in Jesus' holy name. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Go now. Go now. Go now. Hurry up. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Go. Go. Hurry up. Go. Hurry up. Go now. Come out now. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come out. Come out of the man of God. Come out quickly. Come out now. Come out now. Unbelief and doubt. Unbelief and doubt. Come out. Come out. Come on, fight harder. Satan, get out of me now. Get out of me now. Come on, fight harder. Fight harder. Do you want to live? You better fight for your life right now. Do it. You got the anointing. Take it. You got the Holy Ghost. You got the anointing. You're ready now. Go on. Use your authority. Come out. Come out. Use your authority. Fight back. Fight back quickly. Satan, come out of me. Come out. Perversion, come out of me. Fear. Low self-esteem. Hating myself. Hating my body. I repent of it. Leave me now. Spirit of rejection from my dad. Rejection from Dean. Go. Rejection, come out. There he comes. It's Dean. Dean again. YouTubers, I need you to go to the website quickly and hit the button, uh, button at the top of the website. That is the uh, post deliverance button. You need to go through that post deliverance so you do not get reinfected or lose your healing. Go to the teaching button and read the article on how Satan controls the mind and Satan's counterattack. You will be attacked within 48 hours of this service. Next Friday, I will be in Emporia, Kansas at the Church of God of Prophecy. I'll see you there, and I'll see you next time.